we are going into the gospels everybody say the gospels now what are the gospels matthew mark luke john so we have the gospel according to matthew gospel according to mark luke and john out of this john is the one who wrote and spoke the maximum about the holy spirit okay but we will we will still go through all of them one at a time and and just study the study some of the scriptures that speaks very specifically about the holy spirit in these four books okay now there are two people that the bible speaks about in matthew mark luke john who had a relationship with the holy spirit one is jesus but before jesus came somebody his name is john the baptist those of you who are listening to the daily podcast will remember this we did a entire week podcast on john the baptist on how john the baptist was uh, was filled in the holy spirit even before he was born in his mother's womb let's read this scripture luke chapter 1 and verse 15 together for he will be great in the eyes of the lord he must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks he will be filled with the holy spirit even even now now let me tell you this was a regular child okay this was an ordinary baby in the old testament can we pray that over every baby that will be born in our church that even before they are born they will be filled in the holy spirit now jesus said out of all people that are born of women john the baptist is the greatest of them but the the least of the ones in the new covenant under the new testament in the new testament time is greater than the old testament guy john the baptist let me explain this the last prophet in the old testament is john the baptist okay when did the new testament begin when jesus came lived died prophesied and and and, and he f- he finished his ministry and he left and he sent the holy spirit when he finished the atonement work on the cross and he rose again from the dead that is when the new testament began right the last prophet in the old testament was john the baptist and jesus said that he is the greatest in the old testament but the least in the new testament is greater than the greatest in the old testament which means that if john the baptist was filled in the holy spirit before he was uh, even born i think we have greater scope today we have greater scope of being filled in the presence of the holy spirit i'm making you hungry for the presence of the holy spirit i'm making i'm 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 praying that your appetite for the presence of the spirit of god will increase amen it says that he will be great in the eyes of the lord he will be a man set apart you know he will be and and this this is why he will be set apart because he will be filled in the holy spirit even before he is born and in the verse it says in luke 141 that not only really was john the baptist now 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 check this out okay elizabeth is pregnant everybody say pregnant and what is elizabeth carrying on the inside of her jesus who said jesus you need the story of christmas to be told to you who who is elizabeth carrying on the inside of her john the baptist right but mary the cousin of elizabeth is here and the bible says at the sound of mary's greeting elizabeth's child why 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 did the child leap because the child is filled in the holy spirit now 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 this is this is how i know that you are filled in the holy spirit that when you come to church on a sunday morning you will not you there has to be some leaping dancing singing clapping uh, you know going crazy for god amen because that is what that is the natural response of a person who is filled in the holy spirit when the voice of god comes there will be there will automatically be a leaping in your spirit amen amen, amen. so can you be sensitive to god's voice this morning 
can can your spirit keep on leaping all morning can you can 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 you know you know what you see on the outside is not the real you the real you is the one on the inside and on the inside it has to keep leaping throughout uh, you know as i'm bringing these words of hope for you as i'm bringing these words from god you know let your spirit remain on fire amen and the bible says at the sound of mary's greeting what happened the baby leaped and not only was the baby filled in the holy spirit who was filled in the holy spirit elizabeth who was carrying the baby was filled in the holy spirit can you imagine the the destiny of this baby everybody that is connected to you guru they will be filled in the holy spirit everybody that is working with you they will be filled in the holy spirit it's not just about you walking in the presence of jesus you, you experiencing the presence of god see if there is if the presence of god that you are carrying is not contagious then there is something wrong if what we are carrying is not transferable and there is something wrong because any time see it, it, it's it's like this if what i'm carrying it is alive then it has the power to create a, a disturbance a change you know you know the, you'll see this in the new testament that wherever the apostles went one of the two things happened either there was a riot or there was a revival amen, amen. nobody treated them neutrally and said wow we have great men of god in the city we'll have another great service and and we will go back can we pray this for our sunday services that every sunday services will either be a riot or it'll be a revival <laughs> you guys didn't get the point that you know we cannot be neutral anymore if if we come into the house i know there are people who got really offended with you know rupal posted something about her home on the church whatsapp group and and there were people that got really mad and offended and started saying no all your gods are fake and all these things are wrong and 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 they, they became extremely offended why does that happen it happens because what you're carrying has a has has a a way of disturbing somebody else amen when you carry the presence of the holy spirit it will not affect just your mother the next verse the bible says that even his father zechariah who was john's father even zechariah his father was filled with the holy spirit now this guy had a little bit of unbelief okay so he had to wait till john was born when did elizabeth get filled in the holy spirit even before john was born but when did zechariah become filled in the holy spirit after john was born that's perfectly fine some people you will have to wait for god to touch them but that is perfectly okay some people you will have to wait because of lack of belief why did zechariah not experience the same thing elizabeth experienced because of faith he he didn't believe it when god said you're going to have a baby he said how can it happen lord now he had all the right reason to ask it but there was still the wrong question he had all the right reason to say lord i am so old look at my bank account how can i ever do this look at my uh, you know look at my family you know uh, uh, qualification and my family state you know nobody you know esteems my family really high look at my background of where i come from look at the city that i live in what good can come out of this thing we keep doubting ourselves we keep speaking bad about ourselves because of our past and what you are what you are constantly doing is you are speaking words of disbelief and when you speak words of disbelief you are stopping god's move in your life and that's what god you know the angel said this angel said you know as a proof of the fact that this was from me you will not be able to talk till john is john is you know born it, it was he actually technically uh, disciplined or punished him you know i was counseling somebody the other day and i was telling her you know if you cannot speak good things just keep your mouth shut if you cannot speak words of faith keep your mouth shut that's better than speaking negative over your life than speaking words of fear over your life and continuing to drown yourself in your past misery amen now we see that that not only was john the baptist filled in the holy spirit but also 
Elizabeth was filled in the Holy Spirit. Not only was Elizabeth filled in the Holy Spirit, but also Zechariah was filled in the Holy Spirit. That is the extent to which this man carried the presence of God. Amen. Luke chapter 1 verse 66. Read it with me. Everyone who heard about it reflected on these events and asked, What will this child turn out to be? For the hand of God was surely upon him in a special way. Come on, speak this over yourself. For the hand of God was surely upon me in a special way speak this over your neighbor just hold your neighbor and say for the hand of God was surely upon you in a special way what was what is he speaking about he is speaking about the presence of the Holy Spirit before he was born he was baptized in the presence of the Holy Spirit and when even before he was born people were getting saved through his ministry even before you know he could start speaking people were getting filled in the Holy Spirit because of just him being around them amen and and the Bible says everybody started wondering who is this guy gonna turn out to be you know let's read the next verse Luke chapter 3 verse 15 it says everyone was expecting the Messiah to come soon and and they were eager to know whether John might be the Messiah everybody were like wait 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 this guy sounds very cool this guy was filled in the Holy Spirit even before he, he was born. You know, his father was deaf. Uh, sorry, his father was dumb till he was born. And suddenly he started speaking. And a and, and, and lot of miraculous events happened in his lifetime. I think this could be the Messiah. That this could be the person that we were waiting for a long time. Let me read John's reply to you. Luke chapter 3 verse 16. John answered their questions by saying, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I am. So much greater than I am not even worthy to be his slave and untie the straps of his sandals. Now he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And with fire. Let me, let me give you the true sign of a person filled in the Holy Spirit. Instead of drawing people to himself, he will draw people to Jesus. If, you're, if your anointing is causing people to fall in love with you, there is something wrong about your anointing. That was Lucifer's problem. You know, Lucifer wanted people to, you know, love him. Lucifer was saying, hey... I I can do everything that Gabriel can do. I can do everything that God can do. I think I need more attention here. But you know, John, somebody came and asked John, Hey, I, you know, by any chance, would you happen to be the same guy? He said, no, no, no. Don't even mistake me for that guy. Because the guy that that is going to come, I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals. Can you imagine this guy's humility in leading people to Jesus? That is the mark of a person who is genuinely filled in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Now, now I know that I cannot control the kind of theology that you are exposed to outside this church. But as your pastor, I have to warn you this. That if you hear a voice that is drawing you to himself instead of leading you to Jesus, then that is definitely not the voice from the Holy Spirit. This is the mark. This is the mark. Any man that is filled in the Holy Spirit will not draw people to himself. He will give glory to Jesus. He will, he will say, it's not about me. You see this throughout the uh, apostles, throughout all the leaders who were, you know, these guys, we, we don't do one third of the things that they do. That they did back then without the technology, without all of these things. We don't do, we still don't do one third of the things that they did. They technically evangelized the whole world, their known world back then. There was no flights, nothing. They didn't do anything. And you would see all of these people giving credit to Jesus, giving glory to Jesus, directing people to Jesus, not to themselves. Amen. And that is the mark of a man of God, of a woman of God that is anointed by the Holy Spirit. And I pray that when you start doing your ministry, 
Somebody said amen. amen. Do you know that you have a ministry? Yes, sir. If no, did anybody say no? Everybody in this house is called to be a minister. If you're not called to be a minister, please don't come here. I feel if you're here, it is because God wants to train you for ministry. Amen. And when you become a minister, this has to be your role model. John the Baptist has to be your role model. Don't take people to yourself. Don't direct people to yourself. Direct them to Jesus. He's the one who can help them. Your counseling, your advices, your help will help them probably one day, two day, three days. And the next time the fever comes back, the next time the problem comes back, the next time they fall back into addiction, you would not be there with them at that point. You know who will be there with them at that time? Jesus will be there. So when you direct them to Jesus, you give them a permanent solution. Amen? Amen? And that's what John the Baptist did. And now John the Baptist was prophesying about this Jesus. What did he prophesy? When he comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That was, that was the introduction that, that John the Baptist gave about Jesus. He says, hey, wait, wait, wait. What I'm doing is water ministry. But what he's going to do is Holy Spirit ministry. I'm just baptizing you in mere water. But when Jesus comes, guys, it's going to be another realm altogether. It is going to be fire. Amen. Because this ministry of the Holy Spirit is not extremely comfortable. Everybody cannot enjoy it. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, 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 cannot, you, you cannot contain it. Like, have you seen anybody who is set on fire, sitting nicely and enjoying the movie? Anybody? No, what do you see them doing? Have you seen this in a movie at least? If not live, at least in a movie or in a video, have you seen somebody catching fire? What do they do? They're shouting, they're screaming, they're running, they're, they're doing something crazy. Amen? Let this house be filled with some crazy people. Not crazy because of the things of the world, but crazy because of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let us be, let us be in, a, in continually receiving that fire of the Holy Spirit every week, every Sunday when we come. We just come here to refuel our fire and go back and set the whole world on fire. Amen? Amen. Whatever we receive. See, see I've, I've told you this example before. What we do in these two hours in the Sunday morning, it's like that, you know, that, that you know, break between that 45 minutes, 45 minutes of the, uh, the, the football match, right? It's a 90 minute match, but in between they have a break when the coach, they, they, they get to uh, revive themselves, where they get to take some drinks and the coach gives them some instructions and, and sends them out. The real battle, the real game is one on the field, not in the dressing room. Amen. This is only your dressing room, guys. The real battle is fought out there in the world when you carry this fire of God and, and go and set people on fire for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now, John the Baptist was speaking about Jesus. Now, you will see something very spectacular about Jesus. The Jesus' birth itself was by the Holy Spirit. Now, John's birth was not by the Holy Spirit. It was because God gave a divine ability to, uh, you know, Zechariah and Elizabeth to conceive. But Jesus' birth itself was by the Holy Spirit. And he says, this is how he was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow. That is a miracle. That is definitely impossible. No matter how many days you fast and pray, you cannot be pregnant. Anybody tried that? You're still a virgin. You're still unmarried. You fast and pray. You go and ask leaders to pray, lay their hands on you. Nothing will happen till you become intimate with a man. Right? But here is somebody who is completely virgin, but she becomes pregnant. What does the Bible say about it? She becomes pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, why was that necessary? It was because Jesus was supposed to be distant from the sin that we are all conceived in. Every one of us, we are conceived in sin. 
right from Adam all the way down to Priji Vergis and my son Israel Vergis, all of us are sinners. When we were conceived, when we were born, we are all conceived in sin. Amen. But when Jesus was being born, he had to have a different DNA altogether because if it, it, was, if it was not so, he would not be able to redeem me from my sin. The lamb that would be slaughtered on my behalf on the cross had to be a sinless lamb, has, had to be a, a spotless lamb. Amen. And that's why from the very beginning, the Bible says, Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. No, no, no. Mary got confused because this has never happened before. That is absolutely valid to ask. You know, Zechariah, it was not valid for Zechariah to ask because he had one Abraham who was pregnant in his old age. He had so many other people in the Bible who were pregnant in the old age, right? For Zechariah, it was wrong to ask, how is this going to happen? But for Mary, it was perfectly okay to ask, um, how is this going to happen? I know no man. This is not an easy thing that I'm, I, I have to say yes to. Give me the next verse. Then the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come. Somebody scream, upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So that the baby to be born will be holy. And he will be called the Son of God. Now this is the recipe to give birth to Jesus. Can I give you the recipe? How many of you want people to see Jesus in you? How many of you want to, to see the life and the ministry of Jesus manifest through your life? Can I give you the recipe? Here is the recipe. The Holy Spirit comes upon you and the power of God will overshadow you. You know, to remain in the shadows is not very easy. Anybody can be out here in the spotlight and preach and, and, and talk about God and, and, and get hand claps. And anybody can do that. But to remain hidden in the shadows is a very difficult thing to do. And that is what, that is what Mary had to do to conceive Jesus. To be conceived of Jesus. For Jesus to be conceived in Mary, this is what she had to do. She had to allow the Holy Spirit to work in her life. Now, in our lives, we are not talking about Jesus being, we being pregnant with the physical person of Jesus. We are talking about the quality, the, the very essence of who Jesus was manifesting through us. That when people you know, feel your touch, they will feel, wait, 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 this was not an ordinary person touching me. This was, this was Jesus who was touching me. The Bible says that, Jesus said this, as the Father sent me into the world, now I send you into the world. Why? How can that happen? That can happen only when Jesus is produced on the inside of us. And how was Jesus produced on the inside of Mary? When the Holy Spirit came upon him and the power of God overshadowed him. Can we pray this for the next one week? This is the key verse from this entire sermon. I'm going to quote at least a you know, dozen other verses after this. But, but this is the very key verse in this entire sermon. Can you go back and pray this for the rest of the week? Holy Spirit, come upon me. Power of God overshadow me and my work and my, my everything that I am what, will you please just overshadow me where to such an extent that I am no longer visible only Jesus is visible through me to such an extent that every word I speak will no longer be me it will be Jesus speaking through me to such an extent that when I spend money it will no longer be according to my plans or how I want it to be but it will be how Jesus would want his money to be spent Give me the next verse. It is speaking about Joseph. He heard this story and what did he do? Like a nice gentleman, he said, I will just, you know, dissolve this engagement. And as he considered this in his mind, an angel of the Lord came and told him, Guess what? Your child, the child that Mary is pregnant with, is conceived by the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, when you take a step for God, God will send 
all heaven and angels to to come and stand on your behalf if mary becomes pregnant today the maximum she will receive is some wrong tweets or facebook posts about her you know people will talk about her on the internet maximum it will become a youtube video viral video but back in those times she will get stoned for what she did if it was a sin she might get stoned for doing that outside of marriage she might get killed she was taking a a life risk by saying holy spirit come upon me amen you should understand the same risk the apostles and then in the new testament church they all went through the same risk when they said holy spirit come upon me you know what happened to them you know when when paul was you know filled in the holy spirit what was the prophecy given to them it was not that you will be a mighty man of god you will travel to many nations he'll say this was the prophetic word about him that you will suffer greatly for my name's sake that was the prophetic word about him when he was filled in the holy spirit now when you are when you yield yourself to the presence of jesus don't think that your life will become easy after that it might become challenging it might become the the whole world might start fighting you after that point but that is perfectly fine can i tell you why can i tell you why because the holy spirit is on the inside you when the holy spirit is on the inside you he will send angels to protect the baby that god is putting on the inside of you he sent an angel to joseph if joseph would dissolve that engagement mary can get into trouble but if joseph doesn't dissolve that engagement everybody thinks oh wait they couldn't control till marriage it was just a mistake that they did and okay it's their baby you know it's just they you know the people will just you know say it was joseph's mistake and and, and that's what god did god allowed the baby to be protected god allowed the work of the holy spirit to be protected amen see when you stand up for god god will stand up for you when you you know even when there is persecution even when there people are talking bad about you even when people are uh, you know saying all kinds of wrong rumors and wrong things about you angels of god will come by you amen <laughs> angels of god will stand by you angels of god will protect what god does when you are led by the holy spirit god will assign his angels to protect you to to stand guard to you to to take care of you and and the enemy cannot touch you without god's permission amen and in jesus' birth was so miraculous because jesus was born by the holy spirit now a couple of weeks back we we studied on the roles and responsibilities of the holy spirit any anybody remember any particular roles or responsibility he is the ceo he is our gps he is our intelligence agent he has he is our identity card do you remember that that holy spirit is the one who who helps identify us before the people of the world amen now it is the same for jesus do you want to see how the holy spirit helped identify who jesus was luke 2:2025 20, at that same time there was a man in jerusalem called simeon his he was a righteous and devout man and was eagerly waiting for the messiah to come and rescue israel the holy spirit was upon him now in the following verses i'll tell you this is not in the script i've not put the verses up but i'll tell you what happened as soon as he saw jesus you know everybody in the in the temple thinks this is just another baby dedication but but when when this guy saw jesus because you know what happened to him what is the speciality about simeon he was filled in the holy spirit the holy spirit was upon him and suddenly the holy spirit began to manifest and the holy spirit began to speak through this guy and he said this is the light of the world this is the light of israel after that came another prophetess her name was anna now she has been spending her entire lifetime in the temple just praying and waiting on god and the holy spirit came upon her and she began prophesying about the baby to everybody else you know you know this is the difference between men and women men they will come and tell you if you have a problem women 
they will go and tell everybody else that's i'm not talking about our church people our church people don't gossip at all and we we don't uh, we don't do that distinction right all the ladies in the house and amen no you do gossiping or you don't do gossiping you know th- th- this this is uh, this is so funny the bible says simeon went to the parents and prophesied about the baby to the parents but anna she went and prophesied about the baby to everybody else she began talking to all the people in the in the in the place and saying hey wait wait i i sense the holy spirit in this baby this is the messiah this is now now wait a minute wait a minute anna he has not yet healed the sick he has not yet raised the dead he has not yet you know there were many people who believed in jesus when he raised the dead there are many people the bible says the disciples didn't believe in jesus till jesus turned the water into wine <laughs> when he turned the water into wine they got some nice wine to drink that is when they finally started believing in jesus you know many of us are like that we we wait for something good to happen to us something some wine to come our way only then we believe but here was a woman how did she identify that she that this is the messiah because there was the holy spirit's presence upon her and the holy spirit's presence upon the baby and something just connects when two people that are filled in the presence of the holy spirit begins to talk to one another amen I can I can I speak this over all the unmarried people in the house can I pray that when you get married it will be because there will be a spiritual connection not because there is a not because there is an emotional connection now emotional connection can happen between anybody okay you talk long enough to somebody you will you will have an emotional connection to the not because of a physical connection don't get married to the person just because you you sinned with her or him physically no don't don't make don't enter into a lifetime of mistakes just because you have you have done you know one or two mistakes let me tell you what is the right way to enter into marriage wait for that one man that one woman that you can connect to in the holy spirit your spirit like i told you the the the, the spirit of john the baptist it it leaped in the mother's womb when you come in contact when an elizabeth and a mary comes in contact there will be a there will be a spiritual connection amen can you can you wait for that church can i can i can i expect that you know many of you people you call me as your father can i give you that advice and can i ask you will you wait till you hear that voice in the spirit that leaping in the spirit don't jump because the guy or the girl is cute it's 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 so it's so crazy how we make our decisions how we identify the people you know the very identification about jesus let's let's read about how john the baptist identified jesus john 1 verse 33 i didn't know he was the one but when god sent me to baptize with water who is this speaking john the baptist is speaking he says when god sent me to baptize with water he told me the one on whom you see the spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the holy spirit now you remember john's prophecy right that the one who comes after me will be the one who will baptize you with the holy spirit and with fire and then god the father is speaking to john the baptist and he's saying this is how you should identify jesus he is the one upon whom the holy spirit will come and and just settle there not that the holy spirit will come and leave but the holy spirit will come and just and just rest and just settle over there he is the one he is the messiah and read the next verse verse 32 and then john testified i saw the holy spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him amen see when you are led by the holy spirit yourself you will see other people that are filled and and baptized in the presence of the holy spirit and that's how you know i can marry this guy I can walk with this guy. I can do business with this guy. I can do ministry with this person. I can I can be hand in gloves with everything that this person has got to. I have identified that the spirit of God is upon this person. Amen. Amen. 
don't look for other signs identify the people your best friends your your the people that you will do business partnership with all of these things identify them based on your dependence on the holy spirit amen come on you're getting quiet this morning is am i asking you very hard things you're thinking pastor all of this is very good in theory i don't know how to practically apply it let me tell you what is a simple solution when you are filled in the holy spirit things you, you know god will open your eyes to see things that nobody else can see hear things that nobody else could hear now wait a minute there were so many other people in that place when jesus was getting baptized but only one person testified that the holy spirit came down upon him who was the one person john why because he was filled in the holy spirit you think that no pastor i i don't have the 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 theological understanding that you have i don't have the holy spirit as much as no you all you need is hunger for the presence of the holy spirit and when the holy spirit is upon you it will be natural matthew chapter 3 verse 16 after his baptism as jesus came up out of the water the bible says the heavens were opened and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and and settling on him do you remember john's prophecy that did you remember what god told john that the spirit of god will rest upon this man and that's exactly what happened amen not only was jesus birth by the holy spirit even his identification the way he was identified to be the savior to be the messiah that happened by the holy spirit amen now he was not only the id card for jesus he was also jesus's gps system let's read this out loud and and scream it out jesus full of the holy spirit returned from the jordan river he was led by the spirit in the wilderness amen what is the key to be led by the spirit that you be full of the spirit little sprinkling baptisms in nature layer you know lit, you know we 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 become satisfied with those sprinkle infant baptisms where you know there is sprinkle of some water and we we expect the same thing in church we come to church and we receive some sprinkle from the pastor or from the person sitting next to there is too much of holy spirit there and it just little bit falls on us and and we are like oh this is it i can live the rest of my life like this no you will not get directions like this do you do you want the holy spirit to be your gps then you have to be full of the holy spirit how can you be full of the holy spirit when you are when you're not satisfied when you when you you know how can you be full with food how many of you have been to abiruchi abiruchi restaurant this is the particular thing about this restaurant you have a mini meals and you have regular meals okay and when you think mini meals and regular meals you feel that oh i can do with regular meals but i'll tell you something about regular meals it doesn't stop coming to your table they've it's unlimited supply of rice on your plate till the time you ask them to stop they will continue to serve the rice now when do you stop when you are full right now let me tell you when do we stop we we stop we taste the taste the rice oh very nice we are all on dieting right we we cannot eat till we are full we we just taste and is it amazing rice but i no further because my pants are getting tight and you know I, I, people are making fun of me i i don't think i can eat any more further i cannot eat till i am full you go you don't understand what i'm saying i'm the only person okay <laughs> you know we behave the same way with the holy spirit we are all on a holy spirit diet we come to the church till the time we are not uncomfortable till the time things are cool and you know fine and you know the holy spirit 1 o'clock pastor 1 o'clock how can you take till 1 5 pastor this is this is uh, no 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 pastor let's call for a committee meeting and let's discuss this big problem that we have pastor is preaching too long on sunday mornings and you know you know we cannot we cannot wait to be full i just need a little taste and and then you're expecting the holy spirit to direct your steps 
How can that happen? The Bible says Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit. And because he was full of the Holy Spirit, he was led by the Spirit. Read Mark chapter 1 verse 12. I'm going to declare this over every single one of you. Okay? The Bible says the Spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness. Now, now, when you are so full of the Holy Spirit, you will be compelled by the Holy Spirit. Come on. How many of you want the Holy Spirit to compel you? Where you're saying, Lord, I don't want to be my master anymore. I want the Holy Spirit to be my master. I want the Holy Spirit to compel me into, into sacrificially worshipping, into sacrificially giving, into sacrificially obeying God, into sacrificially doing the will of God. I want the Holy Spirit to just compel me. Amen. Not only was he led by the Holy Spirit when he was going, when he was returning, Luke 4, 14, it says when Jesus returned to Galilee, he was filled with the Holy Spirit's power. And reports spread about him throughout the whole region. Why? Because he was filled in the Holy Spirit. Now today we are trying our best to, to, to spread the word about ourselves. But we don't have to do that. When you are filled in the Holy Spirit, man... People will come searching for you. When John was filled in the Holy Spirit, he was in the wilderness, not in the marketplace. And people went out into the wilderness to listen to John preach. Amen. He was not only Jesus' ID card. Now, who are we talking about this morning? Who is Jesus? He's the Son of God. He's our Savior. He's our Lord, Master. He's the, he's the one that sustains the whole world. But even Jesus had to depend on the Holy Spirit when he was on the earth. How much more? Now, 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 wait. Why did Jesus have to depend? Jesus was a sinless guy. Had, had nothing wrong going for him. If Jesus being the most sinless person had to depend on the Holy Spirit's GPS to, to guide his steps. How much more you and I? need the Holy Spirit's directions in our lives. We become satisfied thinking, whoa, the, I, I don't think I, I really need to that extent. I think I'm satisfied with this or I'm satisfied with that. But, but when we come to the Lord and say, Lord, if Jesus needed it, I need it even much more. Amen? Not only was he the GPS system for Jesus, he was also Jesus' CEO. Please don't get offended by me saying that he was Jesus' CEO. When he was on the earth, he was equipped and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now you should understand, Jesus himself is all powerful. Okay, But when he left heaven, he said, I'm going to be like an ordinary man. So I'm going to keep aside my power. I'm going to keep aside my omniscience, my omnipresence, my omnipotence, my, all those fanciness that, I, that, that is associated with the Godhead. I'm going to keep it aside and I'm going to come as a normal human being. When I come as a normal human being, I'll be so desperate and dependent upon the Holy Spirit like anybody else on planet earth was. Amen. And because Jesus was dependent on the Holy Spirit, the Father gave him the Holy Spirit as much as he wanted it. Let me read this verse, John 3.34. For he is sent by God. He speaks God's words. For God gives him the Spirit without, without. But let me tell you, Jesus was just an ordinary person like you and us. He was a human being. He was a complete human being. If he could be filled, if Jesus can be filled with the Holy Spirit without limit, how much more can you and I be filled with the Holy Spirit? I like this beautiful point that my, my dear friend Pastor Hari mentions, mentioned a couple of times. There was a demon on the other side of the river and when Jesus went out to cast out the demons from that guy, he said, I have 6,000 demons in me. So my, my friend, this is what he said. He said, can you imagine the spiritual capacity of a human being? That you can host 6,000 demons on the inside of you. Can you, can, you, can, you, can you imagine what is your spiritual capacity? Now demons come to torture, kill, steal and to destroy, right? But when the Holy Spirit comes, He comes to lift you up, bless you, bring you abundant life. Amen? If, if a demonized man can host... Sits thousand demons in him. 
how much more can you and I host the Holy Spirit? Do we need to diet anymore? Because he, if we will go to him and say, Lord, you are our CEO. You are the one who enables us. You are the one who equips us. You are the one who fills us with the strength to do what I am called to do. Let's read Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. And he has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released. That the blind will see and the oppressed will be set free. In three levels of the Holy Spirit. That the three levels of, 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 of enabling of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' life. The first thing that he did was he, he came upon him. Right? The second thing that he did was he anointed him. He gave him the uh, power, the strength required to do what he is supposed to do. And the third thing that he did was he sent him out. Amen. What do we need from the Holy Spirit this morning? We want him to come upon us. And we want him to anoint us. And we want him to send us out. Amen. Say this out with me. We want the Holy Spirit to come upon us. We want the Holy Spirit to anoint us. And we want the Holy Spirit to send us out of this place into our destinies. Amen. 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 Jesus said this, Matthew 12 verse 28. But if I am casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. Let me tell you the key to declare and establish the kingdom of God wherever you go. Be so full of the Holy Spirit that when you stretch forth your finger, demons will begin to tremble and demons will begin to leave and demons will begin to run away from the house. Amen. I want you to confess this in your offices. Every place that you walk in, there is a, a, a contradicting spirit to the spirit that is on the inside of you there is a contradicting spirit that is working in your office in your home in your city in your nation you have to be the David facing this Goliath not in your own strength but in the strength of the Holy Spirit and saying hey I'm not doing this by my own strength but I'm I'm speaking this in the authority in the name of Jesus but in the power of the Holy Spirit because I carry the power of the Holy Spirit, you cannot stand against my family. You cannot stand against my home. You know, this is something that I have seen the, the, the demons do to me. You know, when, when we go on a spiritual attack, he knows that he cannot touch me. What he does is he touches my property. You know, he, he destroys my stuff. He, the demons think that they can just by, you know, bringing problems your way by bringing you know distractions your way they can keep take your eyes off of Jesus but that those are the times when you have to say wait 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 demon you're not the king here I am the I am the child of the king you're not the Lord here in this place I know I work with the Lord I I am a, I'm a I'm a personal assistant to the Lord of the universe amen and right now I'm filled in the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And because I'm filled in the power of the Holy Spirit, there's no demons and there is there's no nothing that the enemy can do that can stand against my life, that can stand against my church. Amen. I pray that all of you will rise up and go out of this place as generals of God. People that are enabled as, 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 as people. The Bible says, Matthew 12, 18... You know, it spoke about Jesus saying he was the man who was, who was anointed to proclaim justice to the nations. Jesus, how did this happen? By the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit worked very closely with Jesus. You know, the most teachings about the Holy Spirit in the New Testament or in the Gospels is through Jesus himself. Right, because Jesus knew this person very close. Now, if there is anybody who is very qualified to explain well about me, then it is my wife. Why? Because she spends a lot of time with me. You know, she lives with me. She knows what time I wake up. She knows what time I sleep. She knows my habits. She knows my food likings. She knows my food dislikings. Everything. She knows it. So the best person to introduce the Holy Spirit to us is Jesus himself. 
John 3 verse 5 Jesus replied I assure you no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit you have to be born of the water the water represents the word of God the water represents the water of baptism but but you know it's not enough that the water goes over your body it's also necessary that you have an encounter with the holy spirit now jesus is explaining the need for salvation john 6:33 the spirit alone gives eternal life not your pastor not your church membership nobody can give you eternal life who can give you eternal life the holy spirit alone can give you eternal life john chapter 14 and verse 17 read this with me he is the holy spirit who leads you into the world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and it doesn't recognize him but you know him because he lives with you and later will be in you everybody say the holy spirit is with me and now he is in me see when he is with you he is convicting you of your sins and he is convicting you of your need for god and he is convicting you to run after god and when you do run after god what he does is he comes on the inside of you now he is no longer with you but he is also inside you he is not only inside you but he is also with you amen Mark chapter 13 verse 11 but when you are arrested and stand trial don't worry in advance about what to say just say what god tells you at that time for it is not you everybody say not you, not you. who will be speaking but the holy spirit that will be speaking through you amen? amen when you're called into your boss's office and you don't know what to say i say holy spirit i'll keep quiet why don't you talk when you're called before your parents they need an explanation for why you're going to church regularly just say holy spirit i'll keep quiet why don't you talk through me the the relationship that jesus had with the holy spirit luke chapter 10 21 the bible says jesus at one point jesus the bible says he was filled with the joy of the holy spirit jesus can you imagine for jesus he the holy spirit was the joy giver to jesus he was not filled in the holy he was not filled in the joy because of seeing people saved and because of all the other things happening jesus in fact told this to the disciples do not rejoice because evil spirits subject to you instead rejoice because your names are written in the book of life because when your names are written in the book of life what happens is the holy spirit comes on the inside of you that is a good reason for rejoicing when you have a relationship with the holy spirit you will be able to rejoice even when your hands and feet are tied down like apostle paul and silas they were in the dungeon and what were they doing they were praising god you know they were worshiping they they were they they were sitting and dancing and worshiping jesus amen why because they had the they had a relationship with the holy spirit and when you have a relationship with the holy spirit you will have joy everybody that that is asking for joy that is asking for happiness can i ask you something ask wait and just tell the holy spirit to fill you with his joy another thing matthew 12 31 so i tell you every sin and blasphemy can be forgiven except blasphemy against the holy spirit which will never be forgiven can you imagine how close jesus is to the holy spirit jesus is saying this hey you sin against me i will forgive you you better not sin against my spirit don't speak against him luke chapter 12 verse 10 don't speak against my holy spirit amen he is basically tell explaining to us how important the holy spirit is to him himself he's saying it's more important than me if you insult me i will forgive you but don't insult my spirit ever don't speak against my holy spirit ever and then finally just before he was about to ascend into heaven jesus said this matthew chapter 28 verse 19 therefore go and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the father of the son and of the holy spirit 
basically this is what jesus did in his ministry he revealed the father he revealed the son he revealed himself he revealed all about himself and he revealed about the holy spirit but before he was taken away this is what he did he said wait it's not just the father and the son that you need but even the holy spirit the if the, the holy spirit is equal in status and godhead like the father and the son he actually said hey if you want to be saved you don't just need the father and the son you also need the holy spirit amen